and with Howard Hastings of the Hastings Hotel Group. You've been open here for four weeks. What have you been noticing since you reopened, Howard? Well, trading's been very strong, uh, particularly because the restrictions in Northern Ireland are slightly less than the Republic of Ireland. So we've seen an awful lot of people from the South coming up because of that differential in the last four weeks. Um, I, I suppose what's interesting is a lot of people came up last year as well and the word of mouth means some they, they've recruited new customers as well uh, which which is great um, it's the very good season for coming up because visitor attractions don't have the escorted coaches we don't have the cruise liners in town and so it's never been a better time to go and see some of the the major iconic attractions anywhere on the island so for those who are staycationing this year you're in luck because these attractions are, are open and available now uncertainty has been the enemy all through the winter has that had impact on things like uh, retaining staff yes we had a, a, a good scheme here in Northern Ireland. The furlough enabled us to, to hang on to most of our, our core staff. We had a little bit of attrition of that. Uh, I suppose, though, the difficulty has been going from a standing start to being really, really busy uh, and recruiting for that shortfall uh, has been difficult uh, and, and remains so in, in a, a market where post-Brexit so many of the uh, overseas staff who we used to have uh, have, have chosen to, to return to their, their, their countries of origin. Um, so I, I think there's a, a, a period when that will settle down because new staff coming on take a little while to get into the swing of things uh, but those that are are, are learning are learning quickly uh, and, and we have to hope that uh, we can uh, make ourselves attractive so many people are wanting to get into industries where they can engage with people again after so many many months of lockdown you have one of the best known international brands out of northern ireland international uh, is going to be slower to recover what are you seeing uh, happening and what would you like to see happening I think uh, in the same way that so many people who are staycationing this year are, would love perhaps to be doing what they normally do and go abroad in the same way uh, all the, the overseas operators are, are, are telling us that their customers are, are very keen to travel as soon as they are permitted. Uh, it just looks like July and August, the peak season, will probably be lost to us this year because even if restrictions are lifted, access will take a while to return and the pricing of that access is uncertain. Uh, but there is a hope that we will see some coach operators, some premium golfers from international climbs coming over maybe in September and October at the tail end of this season and also perhaps that the next season might kick off a little bit earlier than normal because of that pent up demand. Occupancy, what are you seeing for later in the summer and into the autumn and is there a difference between the city hotels and the out of city centre hotels that you have? Well obviously the, the resorts are completely popular um, and that's midweek and weekends. The city breaks seem to be weekend based uh, and, and so Fridays and Saturdays particularly busy. Uh, I, I think we are looking to the advent of, of local festivals and events, some of which will be midweek to, to shore up that midweek occupancy uh, and then maybe into September, October we, we get some of our conferencing back as well. So it's a little bit patchy compared with the norm uh, and uh, I suppose our, our preparations are such that we recognise that a lot of people staycationing this year will want to be away next year so we have to work extra hard in order to make sure we have our ducks in a row to, to be ready to welcome overseas guests again from next year uh, and, and I think that's really important because uh, I think Ireland uh, fantastic it was pre-Covid uh, had more opportunity to, to gain market share of a worldwide audience uh, and in that post-Covid era where perhaps some customers will be reluctant to go maybe to places like India more reluctant to go to maybe to places like China Europe is, will have a good story to tell Ireland and Britain will have a particularly good story to tell. Can we, coming out of COVID, gain more market share even than we had before we went into it? And what were your percentages for occupancy looking like compared, for instance, with 2019? No, I, I think it'll take into next year to, to get back to 2019 levels. 
the difference I think we're seeing is that the staycationer is paying a little more than we would get from an escorted coach customer, especially with the on spend in the premises, but you trade that off a little bit against the occupancy. What would you like to see the Stormont government do? What needs to be done immediately for the hospitality industry across Northern Ireland? I think the, from Stormont's government, it's a recognition that uh, they, they should be putting everything they can into the marketing, uh, both through Tourism Northern Ireland and Tourism Ireland, in order to take advantage, as I say, of that opportunity that exists to get greater market share coming out of this. From a Westminster government point of view, the two things that could happen would be that the VAT rate, which goes back to 12.5% in September, would perhaps remain there next year uh, because that's so much closer to the European average. And in a post-Brexit world, why would we not, as a hospitality industry, want to be able to compete on a level playing field with the rest of Europe? In addition then, I, I think that air passenger duty, on, particularly on domestic routes, is, is, is that those routes that are going uh, from Northern Ireland to GB, is just a, a complete no-no in terms of making uh, Northern Ireland attractive for GB visitors. Uh, so they're paying when they come here, they pay when they go back. Uh, the flights are, are very uncompetitive on that basis. So. Uh, it's a tax on, on, on being part of the United Kingdom and, and I don't think that's really fair in, for a government that is claiming to want to burnish its, its union credentials. You talked about the importance of getting the ducks in a row, Howard Hastings. Thank you very much. The yellow Hastings uh, ducks are all being lined up in a row from where I'm looking. Thank you. Thank you, Owen.